With the new X series of scratch-offs from the New York Lottery, you can multiply your winnings up to 100 times. The X series from the New York Lottery. It's a better way to multiply. You must be 18 years or older to purchase. Please play responsibly. On this week's episode of Bill's Pod Squad, Bill's general manager Brandon Bean joins Kim and me to talk about the 17th game, all the pro days going on right now, the conversations that happen between a GM and an owner when it comes to contract extensions surrounding quarterback. Brandon also talks about the weight loss competition happening at One Bill's Drive involving many coaches. All that and more as this week's episode starts right now. Welcome to this week's episode of Bill's Pod Squad presented by the New York Lottery. I'm Maddie Glab, your host, joined by host Bill's owner and president Kim Pagula. And today we've got an awesome guest on, Bill's general manager Brandon Bean joins us today to catch up on free agency, all of the pro days that are going on, the upcoming draft, your golf game, and, and maybe a little bit more. I hear there's a weight loss competition going on at One Bills Drive. So we'll touch on that as well. But let's start off with the league meetings. Kim, you've been busy the last couple days. And I know this used to be an event where the GMs would go, the coaches would go, you would go, and it would kind of be a weekend or a week where everybody would get to meet yeah, up somewhere, I but don't, I don't virtual this it. year, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, well, he's probably thankful because he doesn't have to be in those meetings <laughs> uh, that I had to be on for, for three hours the last two days. But, but yeah, I kind of miss not being there because, you know, families would come, you would see all the coaches, um, all the general managers, all the owners. So I kind of miss that part of it. I'm hoping, I think the league is hoping that next year we're going to get back to in person. Uh, but yeah, so it's just been Zoom calls for hours um, a day. Um, but obviously the big news, right? The, the uh, 17th game was officially voted. Yes, I voted yes on it. <laughs> just to make sure. Um, so no, that was really the big story. I think that was coming. And not only that, but that the AFC that we would now be hosting for the first year this uh, this first game at home. Heck so, yeah. yeah. So what is what does the seventeenth game mean for our, for a GM's perspective and from a coaching perspective? Yeah, you know it's uh, it's interesting because you're already trying to figure out who you're playing, which is it's Washington, which is interesting <laughs> because that's Ron Rivera and Marty Herney's there like now, it. so it's uh, a lot of familiar faces that we'll be going against. So that competitive juice gets going, but you know it's uh, it's exciting um, because. And the good thing is we still get three preseason games. You know, that was probably my biggest concern is would, you know, going to 17 games, would they cut it mm -hmm. down to, you know, one or two preseason to have to, to get that with the players? But they didn't. And, and three is a great number because that fourth preseason game has been tough because you're trying to get your roster set and you're playing it up against week one and you're worried about injuries. And you can't just play – you don't have enough guys just to play your backup. So – the way it's set up now, we're going to have two weeks from the third preseason game to get any you know guys healed up, injuries, get our roster set, build our practice squad. It's a lot of shuffling the way it was in the past, so I'm excited about the new format. Yeah, that's really great. I think we all learned last year how important preseason games were, especially players, because I know for some of the veterans it's like, why do we need preseason games? Even if you get those couple snaps or that quarter in, it seems like it's more beneficial than not doing it at all. Yeah, no, it's, well, here's the thing. There's a group of players, we even had some that um, were on our practice squad, didn't get in preseason games, did not get a chance to get up. And think about that for 32 teams. There's a group of players that have yet to, that we haven't seen play and evaluate as pro players. The last time we saw them play, was in 2019 in college. So um, I think there's this, this preseason, there's gonna be a lot of movement and, and, and a lot of our guys are gonna be you know, tracking you know, guys all over. We're gonna be tracking this year's rookie class, but a lot of last year's rookies that stayed on practice squads the whole year. So it's, uh, it's gonna be exciting. And from a fan perspective, you know, preseason also is, allows fans to get really up close and personal. Like, you know, not everyone can, you know, is a season ticket holder. Mm -hmm. They can't all go to every single game. And sometimes that preseason is really a game where it's very easily accessible for the fans. They get to go up, you know, against the wall. They can get the autographs from, from, um, from the players. So, and, you know, we used to have six preseason games at one point. So cu cutting it back to three <laughs> where you still, like you said, Brandon, you get from a, from a team perspective, mm -hmm. you do get what you need um, out of it. 
still good for the fans, but we're not, you know, it's, it's not uh, drawing out that, that preseason like maybe we had in the past. So um, all around, I think uh, this has been a long time coming. Obviously, as you know, with a new broadcast deal, that kind of was one of the trigger points in the new CBA. So I think all of that kind of came together. And I, honestly, Ren, I think us, or us as in the whole league and all the clubs, getting a whole season in, um, in the pandemic this past season, I think that was huge on moving forward with a lot of the, th the initiatives that um, that we're going to see coming out of it. And the 17th game is, was one of them. I don't think we could have gotten it done if we hadn't completed a season. And we're also seeing like us inching closer and closer to normalcy. Meetings are going to still be virtual, but players can be here in person. And I think that uh, says a lot of positive things about the future for possibly OTAs, mini camps, training camp, and that, hey, guys can be back which I don't know if we could have predicted that a couple months ago so uh, how how nice is it for you guys to, to know that okay we're, we're starting to see some normalcy here again finally uh, it's, it's exciting you know Ed Oliver's rookie class they played their rookie year they went home and then the pandemic hit and we didn't get to really see him in person until you know almost August last year and and Ed was a starter and played but a lot of the back end guys Jaquan Johnson mm -hmm. Um, you know, Jaquan was a rookie that year. Well, by the time we got to camp, Micah and Jordan, we had to get them ready for games because you only had so much time. And that's the important thing that sometimes gets lost is people will say, well, uh, well, the, the season went off great last year, yada, yada, yeah, but we didn't get to develop some young players. And in three or four years, if we didn't have these off season, I think we would see, you know, the product start to, you know, start to go the other way a little bit. That'd be great. And, you know, there's a big push on, Obviously, getting uh, people vaccinated. So, mm -hmm. um, as we get more and more as across the country, and then among the staff and our players, the more we can get those vaccinated. I know I've got a half a shot. I think you got both shots, Brandon. Uh, I think you're you're, you're I'm, scheduled I'm, though. Yeah, I'm you're scheduled. scheduled. We're, we're it's looking up. Yeah. So I think that will really help get us back into a full uh, capacity of, of OTAs and into training camp like we know it. I want to touch on free agency too. I know you met with media already and talked about free agency and so did Coach McDermott, but Kim, we haven't had a chance to bring you into the free agency conversation. And I know when that was going on and before everybody's thinking, okay, these the Bills have a lot of free agents. Can we re-sign as many as you probably want to with a low cap number? And we see Matt Milano and then we see Daryl Williams and we see John Feliciano and I'm like, how is he doing this? <laughs> but it, it's happening. And then and then there's Isaiah McKenzie. I mean, Kim, were you thinking the same thing? Like, I've like, just got the best GM in the world here. I, I was thinking candy. Isaiah said he would get <laughs> candy. I'm like, why didn't we do that? I would have had, gladly paid him um, what, what he's worth in candy. So, um, but yeah, no, it, it was awesome to see. Um, listen, you know, Brandon has done a great job last year and going into that. I mean, these things build on each other year after year. I think our players um, really liked what they saw from, you know, from our team in the locker room, the guys, and they just want to yeah. be, and listen, as, as much as, uh, you know, the dollars do matter, um, but it's also about finding the right fit and being in the right place. I think it matters to the players as well. Um, so, yeah, Brandon did a great job. I just say yes. You know, text message comes through. It's like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yeah, sounds good because, you know, I, he doesn't need me. He doesn't need Terry to make these deals. No, they're, they're great though they, it's it, because it is you, you do have to have resources I mentioned that it's um, not every team can necessarily spend all the way to the cap and to allow us to do some things and uh, it, it is important to have that from you know from ownership or, or your hands are tied and I do think to what Kim you know I, was, I said we you know with the media is we had some guys that could have got more mm -hmm. you know had they had the and I think you know a winning organization, seeing that we were a step away from from the the place that we want to get to, and then just you know Josh Allen, you know we got a young quarterback on the rise, and and you know a lot of our guys love our fans too. Just the you know in a pandemic year, our fans still found ways through social media, and then showing up at the airport. I mean, Diggs is still talking about. It. I couldn't <laughs> believe how many people you know were out there at you know whatever time that was, two in the morning, coming home from Denver. Just all that stuff helps as we build this thing going forward. Do you, do you think that last year, uh, without being not having the fans in the pandemic, that it brought the team closer than in a normal year? That kind of maybe helped some of those guys take that home crown discount? I do think that our guys, it was tough. It was tough on a lot of people, um, players, coaches, staff, whatever. 
the thing that I found was people that were, were single, you know, and, and, you know, going home, you don't have a roommate, mm -hmm. you live alone, like that, that was very hard. And, and, you know, we tried to, you know, use our resources, whether it's Desiree or some, you know, player engagement staff, we got a lot of great resources here and, and we tried to help the guys. It's, it was a group effort for us all and we all had rough times through it. But um, I do think that family bond um, and, and this, this community, all of that helped people feel, you know, as good as possible in, in such a rough yeah. time. And I think through that, like, it's no shock to us about the culture that's here. But I feel like over the last year, and of course because of the season this team had last season, that it has just been projected upon every other team in the NFL. And the new players that are coming in to Buffalo that we signed, their answers, some of their first answers, why Buffalo was the culture. Um, what does that say about where this team is at right now? That within a year, the the narrative has changed. I mean, maybe last year, culture wouldn't have been the number one answer for a lot of people, but in a pandemic year with the winning that happened, it's like, I wanna come to Buffalo because I heard about the culture here and that that really matters to me. So what does that say about the trajectory that, that you are on now going into year five? Yeah, it's good. It takes time to build mm -hmm. to build a culture and this is this didn't just happen last year and, and we still have to refine it, add to it. it it's, it's never set. You're always trying to, to make it better. But the best advocate is, is your locker room and your players. And a lot of these guys um, have been vocal about, you know, Sean uses it, be the best version of yourself. And that's, that's what we want. And I think now we have guys that um, have been able to say that. And I know, you know, Diggs called me and said, hey, I ran into this guy at the airport and this guy. And I'm like, one of the guys is, is a really good player. He's under, I'm like, Steph, he's under contract. Like, <laughs> I, I can't do anything about that. But to know that, uh, and, and Josh, and, and, and a lot of these guys will text me and say, hey, this guy's a great guy. I've told him about this place. And it's just, it's fun that we've built it to that point that guys do enjoy being here. And, and it's, it's not looked at, you know, I know a couple years ago when, you know, at one of the press conferences, people were, one of the reporters asked me something about, you know, what do you say when players say they don't want to play in Buffalo? And like, you know, I got angry and said, well, we don't want them if they don't want to be yeah. here. And, and we're in a different spot, which yeah. is exciting as we go forward. You know, Dix yeah. might be looking for, uh, to, to replace you someday. <laughs> yeah, as a GM. You mentioned some of those players that have uh, become GMs. Uh, no so, no doubt, know. no doubt. We, <laughs> I wish we could pay him in candy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't. Josh Allen, too. Uh, not, not <laughs> we're, we're in pro day season right now, and it's completely different than the last year. I know last year we had the NFL scouting combine. That was like the last thing before the world shut down. Yeah. And I remember talking to some people after the fact, months after, and people were like, yeah, I think I got COVID from the NFL <laughs> scouting combine because nobody really knew at that point. It was like still far off in the distance, but it was kind of a week before everything went around but how are pro days going? I mean, is there a big difference for you? I know you guys are going pro days anyway, but yeah. without the scouting combine, it makes it probably that much more important. Yeah, it definitely. We, I hated not having the combine. It's such a, um, an important event for us to, not as much on the field as it is a chance, and, and Kim's in there, she sees us. We, we get to, you know, meet with these guys and, you know, for a good 20 minutes, and you, you get a good feel for them and uh, sometimes it says hey I want to know more sometimes it says I've had enough you know mm -hmm. that answered what I needed he's not for us and, and sometimes elimination is as important as adding a guy to your list so we miss that and so we're, we're down 50 or 60 interviews out of the gate we've had to zoom and things like that but getting on campus seeing these guys move around live seeing how they interact with their teammates all that has been it's been fun to get back to normal and, and the schools have done a great job of whether we test here or test there, of uh, sending them our COVID results to make it work. And, and honestly, all the ones I've been at, uh, it's been like normal, other than you gotta wear a mask. I, yeah. I miss it, because it's, it's fun. I mean, again, yeah, everybody's there, right? You see everybody who's everybody, the whole NFL family is there, and you, you just uh, kind of mi really miss seeing all that and seeing the people. I always see, and this is always bittersweet, because you see people that maybe have worked for the Bills in the past, yeah. um, but now they're with another team. But it's nice to even see them kind of in the hallways or you know going to their own interviews. So um, again, and I this year I haven't been part of any of it because you guys I say, like Kim, said, are you going to pro days? Are you scouting no. players? And I have stuff? been to pro days before, <laughs> but I have not gone this year. So.
Yeah. yeah well, they limited it to yeah. three this mm -hmm. year. Uh, Terry had told me he might join me, but uh, <laughs> he, he didn't make the it. The ones down in Florida. And the ones yeah, down in Florida. But uh, no, it's uh, it's good to get back out on the road, and, and our scouts are um, they're finishing up this week, and then next week we're going to bring them in, and we'll we'll start the final haul. You know, these last few weeks to to get this board finalized, and uh, it's exciting. You know, a few weeks coming up for us. Do you, Do you feel that that you have the, all the information that you need? I mean, a lot of some colleges played, you know, didn't play a full, full season. Yeah. There were um, players that kind of switched colleges, you know, depending yeah. on what they were playing. Or and then out. all the, yeah, the, all the opting out, the travel restrictions that our scouts had going from um, seeing games. Do you feel like, you know, like we lost like 25% of the information or, or do you still feel like, listen, we, we got enough, enough that, you know, we know yeah. what direction we're looking for? You know, it's it's not as good. There's no way. I'm, there's no way to say it. It's not as good as as it normally was because some guys played like one game. I mean, uh, you know, they're Trey Lance at North Dakota State, who's one of these top quarterbacks. You know, we're not in that market, but teams he got to play one game this year, and so I was like, man, how frustrating that'd be if you're in that market and you got to see him play one game. You got to go all the way back, and he was a one-year starter, and so just there were guys like that that had no season or had played three games and opted out, you know, so it's, it's been a different way to do it. And again, probably the thing, as I sit here now, is I haven't, you know, we usually also about now get to bring 30 guys in for mm -hmm. a visit, you know, to answer some more questions. So uh, there's a lot more Zooms still coming. Our coaches have been doing them right now. And then uh, Joe Shane, Terrence Gray, Dan Morgan, myself, uh, these next few weeks when we're not meeting with the scouts, we're going to still be following up and instead of being in person, you know, one more push of Zooms to get to know some of these guys. But um, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll, we'll get to where we need to be. Right. Well, and where we need to be, we're not usually picking at the bottom <laughs> last. Get so used to is it, there Kim. A whole, yeah. So is there a whole different strategy going into, like, even, even picking kind of like even in the middle, but like really picking in that bottom, you know, last five uh, picks there, is there a different strategy going into that than maybe you know? And so much can work? happen. No? Yeah. Yeah. Guy on board? <laughs> no, you just got you got to get your board set and and try and figure out. You know, it will be harder to project when we do our mocks. Right. You know, it's a much easier to do a mock uh, to pick nine or you know or pick twelve yep. of what our op what our options are going to be on the board at thirty. A lot of things can change. The quarterbacks control a lot of that. You know, and and maybe some left tackles or whatever, but. Our, at the end of the day, our process doesn't change. We just have to, we have to be flexible and, and we'll, we're going to get a good player at 30 and, and you know, it's, it's a good draft. And so that's you what's know, exciting. Our fans love it when you move up, the same. <laughs> Kim, is that what you want to happen? Is, is that, are you signaling weird. something? Well, you know, you know 30, like, it's a long day waiting. Kim doesn't want to wait, Brandon, so <laughs> yeah. please make it's some moves. It's a long moves. day waiting. Get 30, trade up so. or trade out. <laughs> Oh uh, well, Joe Shane he goes to bed after Jeopardy, so he'll be he'll there be asleep by, the, uh, by about the fifth or sixth pick. Speaking of mocks, there are mock drafts coming out every day like crazy. We track some and we put them out every weekend. That you know, here's your. 12 mock drafts that came out this week here is who these people project that the bills are going to take and it before free agency it is all over the place and then it starts to get a little bit more specialized but do you look at mock drafts do you laugh at mock drafts right now um how, how does that go about for a scouting department with all these mock drafts flying everywhere you you, you do look <laughs> at them naturally if you know if you're just floating around you're, they're they're everywhere um, we, we actually do use them a little bit, though, from an analytical standpoint. Dennis Locke and, and Luis, they'll put together some stuff for us, just, you know, mocking, basically looking at how many times this player was mocked out of. You kind of look at the reputable mocks, the guys who do it mm -hmm. year in and year out, who have some kind of, they either are some type of scout or they, they, they have close contacts with scouts around the league and, and their intel is usually pretty good. And, okay, this guy in, you took 54 mocks, and this guy was in the first round in 49 of them. This guy was in this guy was in the top 10 in 41 of those. And you can kind of you can't get the order, but you can kind of figure out who's this guy's probably not falling out of the first mm -hmm. round. Like you know what I mean? And we're at 30. If 54 out of 54 say this guy's going in the top 12, like we don't need to spend a lot of time. Yeah. He's not going to be there at 30, barring something 
crazy happening on draft day. Oh, yeah. Well, favorite so far this has been the running backs, but that was before we got Brita. So they're, you know, they're all over the place. You can never predict what's going to happen, of course, until it's draft night. But Friday, this past Friday, there were some trades that happened for the first round. The Dolphins traded with the 49ers and then the Eagles traded with the Dolphins. This is like blockbuster deals going on. I mean, when, when you hear about this, when that pops up on your phone or when you get that text or phone call that this is going down, what's your first reaction as a GM? Well, your first reaction is what are the teams involved and how does it impact you? And um, obviously when the Dolphins are involved, they're in the AFC East. So what does this do to make them better? And, you know, they obviously, they gained some assets to go from three to 12, a couple ones. Uh, and then they took one of those and went back with Philly to six to guarantee themselves probably one of the first non-quarterbacks in the draft because it's looking like top three are definitely quarterbacks, top four is probably a quarterback, and who knows? Someone could trade up with Cincinnati and, and make it five for five, which uh, that would be amazing, but it could happen. I love when things happen like that because I, the NBA is such a league where like that the stuff like that happens all the time and, and these big deals happen and and these big trades happen and it's just you know kind of known as this glitzy glammy thing but it doesn't happen as much in the NFL and so when things like that happen I think maybe people get a little bit more excited about it because you don't see that happen every single year in the NFL when when you're trading first like that. I mean, uh, well, it's a, and again, everybody's always trying to figure out where the quarterbacks are going. Everybody always loves to see who's, you know, who's going where. And so this, when you're talking about picks in the top three, top five, mm -hmm. you're definitely talking about somebody that's trading up for a quarterback. And you instantly start reminding yourself of our process going back with Josh because yeah. at one point we were at yeah. 12 yeah. where San Francisco was. And we didn't have to go all the way to three, but we, we ended up at seven to get Josh. Is your heart beating out of your chest when things like that are happening? And, it, and it's <laughs> you making those moves and it's your decision? Like, oh, I want uh, this You know, it's, uh, it's, it's not my, my personality is to try and just Even know, keel. block out the noise. Um, but when you, done, when you get done, you do come off that high a little bit. And you, all of a sudden, the sweat starts pouring out. And you're like, <laughs> Who's the craziest person in the draft room during that? The craziest person? Who gets the most like? Um, Dan. Uh, Joe Shane and Dan, Dan uh, we were talking about this earlier, Joe sweats the most. Uh, so, you think uh, over Dan? Yeah, both of them are bad, but um, <laughs> it, well, I don't know if you remember this. We were talking about this in another interview, but uh, the scouts were killing Joe. So Dan wasn't here when we traded for Josh, but it was, Kim can remember this, you could hear a pin drop in the room as we're trying to work from 12 to you know, I was trying to get to four, I was trying to get to five, and we had this deal in place with Denver to go to five, but Elway had told me mm -hmm. that, you know, there's, yeah. if there's a player there that he likes, he's not doing it, and he called and said, hey, Chubb's our guy, and then Indy. So Joe had been on with Tampa, and then I called him back, and we are going back and forth, and literally we finally get it done, we get Josh, and um, the people were just crushing Joe because like his whole shirt, his suit was like dripping wet. I mean, just, uh, I think he ruined his suit. I don't, I, I think they probably took it to the cleaners and they said, we can't, we can't do anything about it. But, uh, it was, uh, it was a intense moment, but, uh, one I'll, I'll vividly always remember. And what I think is always interesting is that these calls happen to not just just to Brandon, right? Yeah. Like, and it's not the official call like that Jim Overdorf usually oversees that like secret, you know, mm -hmm. phone. But it's it's all through our cell phones now. And so, like I said, Joe's working the phone, Brandon's working the phone, Jim is like Kevin. Meek, like, it's it's not so you kind of there's a lot of things happening even at the same time uh, when these things go down. So it, it's always like, and I'm always like. Well, well, that's, so, yeah. that's what made it nuts last year is I had like four Zooms going in my in my yeah. basement down there. I had Joe, Dan, Kevin Megank, and Jim on one. I had the scouts on one, and I had some coaches on one, and I had Terry and Kim and Sean on one. Oh and so if you didn't mute one, they would start echoing through the <laughs> other one. Uh, it, was, uh, it was comedy, but uh, we got through it. You're excited to not be doing that yeah. again this year. Thrilled to not be doing a draft <laughs> yeah. in my socks in yeah. my basement. We're going to be able to be together, which has been the greatest thing. We're going to, everyone in the room is going to be, 
vaccinated and we can be mask free. We can understand each other. We can oh. eat, eat in the drink. room. Yeah. That's can't what Terry said. He's like, <laughs> I, I told him when I when the uh, the rules came out, the first one, um, I was like, no, you can't eat or drink in the in the draft room. And Terry he's was like, like I'm not coming. <laughs> like we can't even have those little bowls of candy. I was like, no, no, you can't. So as soon as we got the notice that vaccinated uh, staff could be in the draft room without and eat and all be normal. Um, yeah, I just like told Terry, or like ran, <laughs> ran to him. He's like, oh, <laughs> yes. nice. Best yes. news ever. Normalcy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you talked about Josh Allen and, and trading up for him and um, just watching the draft and, and how it happens with quarterbacks and who's taking who. And Josh isn't going anywhere based on how he's played with the Buffalo Bills. And I know you've been asked about contract extension for him and the answer has been you know whenever it's best for both parties but how do those conversations happen between you and Kim when you're talking about okay this this is coming up yeah I mean it's it's one yeah, of those things yeah Brandon how is it, <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> it's, it talking about yeah, you want to have one of those happen. right now <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those where the bigger deals you know let's go back before we talk about Josh how we talked about Tredavious you know last mm -hmm. summer uh, and, and Dion were, were the two that we got done. And last summer before the players came back, obviously we were trying to see is this, is this gonna happen? You know, are we gonna, and Kim was in with the league. We were hearing stuff from the league and, and we basically said, hey, you know, I kind of gave them, this is their range. This is probably, this is who they're gonna be compared to. This is probably where, what it's gonna cost us. We're gonna try to get it for a little bit lower. It's probably gonna cost us here. Here's kind of our walkaway number, like he would be pricing himself out. And so that's what you got to do for these guys that I call them the double digit, you know, AP wise, 10, 12, mm -hmm. 14 um, plus million. And you, you're trying to get a deal that's fair for the player uh, and fair for the team. And, and you structure it in a way that you can manage the cap like we had to do this year. So you start with telling, you know, Terry and Kim, you know, What's the, what's the financial piece? What's the cash layout? What's guaranteed? This year, we're gonna have to pay, you know, $19 million cash in year one over these months. You know, you, four million here, six million here, the final installment here, and then what's guaranteed the following year. So we just kind of go through it, not as much the uh, every nuance of the contract, right. but more how we have to lay out the cash so that they can plan with Adam Gusky, who you know is our financial guy, just with, you know big deals like this. This is not a, a one you know one year two million dollar player. These things affect all the you know all the dollars as you build it. Josh will obviously take the biggest piece. So be a lot of conversations, but we're going to wait till after the draft before we even get down that road. Kim, and since being the owner of the Buffalo Bills, I mean, these numbers are probably getting bigger and bigger and bigger for contracts with the success that this team has had. Is Brandon giving you these numbers and you're like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny because we've said oftentimes, like, you hope you have to pay the big dollars like because that. that means that you're at a place within your team where you have a player that is worthy of that of that range. Now, where we fall at the end of the day and how it's constructed might change, but you want to, you know, we hope we, you know, have to pay Josh a big number because um, that means that he's, you know, he's be adding some value to our team and the success is coming and we see a lot of upside still in him left. So, yeah, you kind of, you know, I, that's how you kind of have to think of it in a positive way. So you, you want to have to pay those big numbers. I want to brag on, on one of our players, Jordan Poyer, and he posted an Instagram a couple weeks ago saying that he had been sober for a year and had dealt with alcoholism um, and really opened up in the Instagram post saying that he wanted to tell his story to help people who are also maybe dealing with the same thing or similar issues. Uh, and he went on Good Morning Football this morning and, and did an interview and of course was asked about it and just had an awesome answer saying like, at the end of the day, I just want to help people if my story coming out saying that I've been sober for a year and I'm proud to say that um, if I can help just one person it was worth doing that and it was worth um, you know being up front and, and up close and personal with the public and with the fans what does it say about a guy like that to just be a leader in that way and to come out and say this is these are the mountains that I had to climb and this is some of the stuff that I had to work through but I'm here celebrating today I mean that's so cool it's a, it's a, it's so yeah you know, 
um, it's humbling to see Jordan do that and because these guys get put on a pedestal mm -hmm. that sometimes they don't even all want to be on. Mm -hmm. they, they just want to be people and, and but it's natural uh, you know kids, adults whoever are following these guys and so for Jordan to be vulnerable and say you know what I am a really good football player but not everything has been perfect in my life. I wasn't given all this God-given talent. I don't, you know, not everything's been great to say what struggle he had off the field. And, you know, even to the point of when he realized uh, it was an issue and how he went about fixing it. And it's something that we did know internally about and tried to support Jordan and, and a lot of people here. And um, it's so proud of him and so excited that, that he is reach this moment not only that he's overcome it but being a willing to talk about it to yeah. hopefully save one two three four five others yeah we just talked about you know the the big numbers and the dollars that some of these players get not just you know with the bills but in the league overall and the thing is you know you forget that there are people as well yeah. and the human element of that um and then just you know like i said someone like like jordan who's Putting himself out there um, beyond football um, is just great to see. And I think it goes back to the testament of what's what went on in the locker room this past year, and, and the kind of guys that Brandon and Sean have brought in and added to. I mean, those are the type of, of guys that you want on your team who's going to add to the success of the team going forward. So um, just give them a lot of kudos for for coming out like that. I know we're talking about the off season and you know the free agency and the upcoming draft and I know this is more of a busy time for you rather than the coaching staff it's the coaching staff kind of gets to take a little breather here but you guys are now working around the clock with the draft just a month away but things are more chill in the offices at one bills drive and I hear there's a weight loss competition going <laughs> on are you involved in this um, tell us about this competition and you know are you gonna win it uh, I'm gonna try like heck to win it but uh, <laughs> Uh, no, we, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to lose weight. My suits were getting tighter and tighter this year. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, and I kept trying to do these things. And I said, the one thing that I know will get me going is if I can compete with some others. And <laughs> we did something like this in Carolina some years ago. And uh, it, it was fun and lost, I lost too much weight then. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I still got a lot of work to do, but I'm down some. But we've got, yeah, we got like 20 some teams uh, Nate Bresky's kind of headed it up, our head trainer. Of, oh my gosh! Uh, kind of big guy, small guy, and uh, you have like four weigh-ins. It's a, it's like a seven and a half week. We're going up till the wow. day before the draft, and we all pitched in a certain amount of money, and it's kind of the winning team takes all. So it's, it's been fun. I've already seen some people's necks getting skinnier. <laughs> and, um, it's funny. My partner uh, is Scobes, uh, one of our equipment guys, and so the funny thing was. The guys have been telling him, hey, Bean's really competitive. Like, <laughs> if you don't do your part, you may lose your job, bro. And so <laughs> I came down there, Missouri, our head equipment guy, uh, said, hey, come down and mess with Scobes. We got him nervous. <laughs> and so I came down there. And they had put all these Skittles and snacks on his <laughs> desk. And he was over there folding towels. And they're like, hey, Bean, look at look at Scobes' desk, man. Uh, no way y'all are winning. And he's turning eight shit. He's like, Bean, that's not my stuff. <laughs> but uh, he's doing good. He's already lost like 15, 16 pounds. Uh, we're like three weeks in. So uh, is, it, is it based on pounds or body it's, fat it's, percentage? It's or percentage. Body fat. It, it's, fat percentage. It's, it's, it's how much percentage of weight you lose. So everybody had to weigh, okay. in, weigh in. And then, and then uh, like I said, there's like three or four markers we have. And then the Wednesday morning before the draft, we're going to go in the team room and, and <laughs> Are you guys going to take and, pictures? And, like, well, like Nate did Tom take Brady pictures. pictures. <laughs> but uh, I told him, I said, if I see this picture of me <laughs> anywhere, you're done, bro. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't pretty. If I was partners with the GM, I would be so nervous and would be doing every little thing I could to make sure I was dropping weight. So yeah, well, Scopes is nervous. Scopes. I've texted him a few times. He's, he said he's on it, so we'll see. Well, you should get some pointers from uh, Dave's. Oh, I'm, sure, I I'm sure he's got some good uh, weight loss tips. He's in it. So oh, he's in it oh, as well. Oh, okay. Dave's in it. Yeah. Oh, then, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, we, yeah, we've got a good chance to win here. He, he's trying to win. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I saw Dave's the other day, and he had a pretzel from Derek Boyko because Derek was in <laughs> Philly, and, and he gave – Dave, all the, those pretzels from Philly that he loves, and he's like, I'm not eating one of these. I'm handing them out to everyone, but I'm not eating any. Yeah, he's he, like, I'm winning this competition. He came down to my office trying to say, get out of here with that <laughs> stuff, man. Leave me alone. I'm not doing it. I know I'm weak, but I'm not doing it. <laughs>
<laughs> well, the weather started to warm up a little bit. So have you gotten to the golf range, the driving range, golf course? I know there's only a couple open here, but have you been on the golf course yet? So not here. Um, went down to Florida a few weeks back when the kids were on winter break and nice. I got to play twice. But uh, one Matthew Pagula uh, got a Christmas present this year from his parents. Uh, oh, it's from Santa. A, a simulator. Santa. Uh, Santa stopped by and uh, and gave him a simulator. Apparently, Ooh. it couldn't fit in his room. So yeah, Santa didn't realize how big they were. <laughs> <laughs> so it made its way over here uh, to a secret hiding place. So this week, twice uh, during my lunch breaks, I went over there and, and hit some balls. Good, good way to clear does, my does head. Does he have the uh, the different courses he was buying? No, we got to software. We got to do the courses. Okay, so it's got right. some competitions where you can take clubs and try to hit on the greens. You know, you you pick the yardage mm -hmm. and you can go against somebody or whatever. So you can still go in there and compete, which is fun. But uh, no, the next thing is we got we got <laughs> to add some courses on it. But soon enough, with the weather, we'll we'll be out at the at the at the golf I course. I played on one of those simulators, and I had it was my first time, and so you're you're chipping. 20 yards and I'm like whacking the thing and people that I'm playing with are like you just chipped it 50 <laughs> yards it says 20 yards on it I'm like I don't know how this simulator works I can't see yeah, the yards it's, it's just a, a screen that you're looking at but Josh Allen said that he would help Kim and I with our with our game so okay. you've got to you've got to help us too I love it We're in. Uh, Matthew was going through the house and he's like mom can we put it here I was like Matthew, you can't put it right, like right in the middle of the living room, but, but the, the basement was like our ceiling wasn't high enough in the basement, and the thing was huge, and I was just like, Matthew, I, you know, in the garage, like we had no room in the garage, and there was no Wi-Fi in the garage, so it was like, it's like, dang it, what are we going to do? And I think I was just talking to, I can't remember what, why, what made me think of, of Jeff, like, I'm like, oh, maybe we got some extra storage room. Oh, I think because yeah. he wanted to uh, redo the equipment space yeah. during our budget meetings. So yeah. I was like, huh, I wonder if there's other space around to, to put this thing. So, of course, they found space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're excited. Yeah. So oh it's, it's already getting good use. That's amazing. Yeah. The next thing that's ahead, you know, past the draft is training camp. Kim, do we have any updates? I know we don't really have a date with training camp yet, but I, I know there's probably conversations going on. Buffalo, St. John Fisher, not yeah, sure what that's you know, going to like. We would love to have it at St. John Fisher, hoping you know with the vaccinations uh, really opening up to everybody and getting those things in. I think we're you know seeing a light at the end of the tunnel where that actually ends up um, come July. Um, so we are going to plan for both. Listen, we, we didn't have, uh, we, we never had, uh, training camp on campus here at one bills drive before and last year we made it work and it worked so now we know we can do both if we have to come back to one bills drive we know we can make it work uh, but if we can go to fisher that would be great as well so um, we're good either way it's just now kind of waiting for the other higher beings you know our state and and uh, the league to tell us which direction so we're ready either way yeah, Brandon, was it interesting having it here and, and knowing now, you know, we can do it anywhere, of course, hoping that we can get to St. John Fisher again this year, but knowing like, hey, if it doesn't happen, it's going to be completely fine here. Yeah, I mean, we got great facilities here, so uh, it's there's things that we gained here that you can't do there. There's things that you can gain there, just that, that bond that you can build, mm -hmm. you know, going back in the dorms, people aren't forced to go home. So. It, it wasn't all bad that we were here. I mean, we spent 18 million of, of their money a couple of years ago to build this yeah. that you can't replicate anywhere we could go. So uh, we got a lot of good use. And, and then we, I don't know if you guys remember, we did tents outside um, to meet Gosh, in. Gosh, yeah. You know, it, was, uh, it was a lot of people that did a lot of work behind the scenes. And obviously they gave us the resources to do it, but um, the players really enjoyed it. The weather is great, you know, that time of year being able to eat outside and we had you know the, the cooling sets and, and to meet outside i think it was a cool change up and especially with what was going on uh to do but uh you know we've had great years at fisher too so as kim said once we get some direction we'll be able to plan accordingly i mean i miss i'm missing that food at, at st john fisher yeah. too there's yeah. good golf courses at st john fisher too yeah definitely <laughs> uh i might have had to make one trip up there with one kyle williams on that day <laughs> off uh to go play Oak Hill, uh, just to get my feel for, I almost, my car almost drove right to the dorm, but uh, nah, it's uh, it's fun to go up to Rochester, yeah. a lot of good people. Ice cream, golf, the food, the unlimited amount of food. Uh, 
I love it. Yeah, but... yeah. I might do another weight loss competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, after, after uh, all that food. But thanks for sitting down, guys, and, yeah, and talking thanks, about Brandon. what's been it's going good on. To see it. Appreciate it's you guys talking. giving me the yeah. invite. You guys, some, you've yeah, had thanks some high, for getting on the podcast. Some high esteemed colleagues on here, so it's uh, it's good to finally get that invite. No, yeah. we were waiting for the perfect time. Okay. And this was the perfect time. It was like, well, we can't do it right after free agency because Brandon's just talked to you know media, and he, we want to get some good answers from you. We don't, we don't want the the repetitive answers that you've already <laughs> given everybody else. So. The canned answers. Yeah, so yeah, we want the real stuff. But no, Kim pulls the guests on here. So and, well, and we were able to do it in person, so that was nice not to have to do the whole Zoom interview again. So yeah, thank so, you. Yeah, the so. more the more we can get away from Zoom, uh, the better we're all going to be. Zoom fatigue. Yeah. It's a real thing. But. All right. Well, thanks, Maddie. It's good to yeah. see you. Good to, good be to back see you guys. together on the Pod Squad. So Yeah, nice yeah. to be back. Thanks to all of our listeners for watching, listening, tuning in. Make sure you guys stay up to date because we're going to have a lot more podcasts dropping here in the next couple weeks as we get closer to the NFL draft. Hope you guys have a great week.